Hey, ladies and gents, welcome to another episode of Optimize Your Body podcast. And today is going to be gold. So I've got um, I've got Alyssa on the line here from the Carnivore Stories. And how do I pronounce your surname? Grubner. Grubner. So I messed up her first name <laughs> yesterday. So I don't, I don't want to mess up the surname. So Alyssa Grubner, yeah? Grubner? Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's awesome. I've got Alyssa Grubber here today from the Carnivore Stories podcast. And Alyssa is a 28-year-old wife, homeschool mom, and personal trainer living in Georgia, USA. And she used to really struggle from a long list of chronic mental and physical health conditions, including hypertension, reoccurring UTIs, depression, anxiety, binge eating, and sugar addiction. So she managed to turn all of this around a couple of years back when she switched over to a carnival lifestyle and made some permanent lifestyle changes. And now she is in the shape of her life physically and mentally. And she also is helping many other people transform their lives. Welcome to the show, my friend. Yay. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> it's an absolute pleasure. Um, so yeah, if you wouldn't mind just uh, basically, I'm just curious to ask you the first question, just to give uh, the audience a bit more of a insight into you obviously i just covered the stuff there in the bio but i just like to know um if, if you can go a little bit deeper on the, the the biggest struggles that you had prior to really improving your health and and switching over to you know a carnival lifestyle yeah so since i was like four years old um i've had chronic or i yeah i had chronic utis and these were at least six a year like one every other month uh, back to back, um, and nothing, nothing was helping. And th this was something I thought I had to live with. Then when I was like 17 years old, I started to have elevated blood pressure. Um, from there, you know, so I'm like stacking these health issues on top of each other. I also had eczema throughout childhood. Um, and from there, when I was about 19, I gave birth to my first child and I was morbidly obese at that time and adding to the UTIs, adding to the eczema, adding to the hypertension, I started to have chest pains and morbid obesity. Um, so long, long story short, years later, I finally found carnivore and really just like, like magic healed these things. And it's funny because we were talking before and, you know, you were saying how, you know, it seems kind of miraculous, but then you look into it and it's like, okay, well, this makes sense why this would work. Um, you know, once I started to learn how my body is actually working, um, what's going on inside here, how low carb diets affect, uh, human physiology. It made sense why I was able to get rid of the high blood pressure. You know, the UTIs were caused by excess sugar, um, the eczema, uh, the mental issues I was dealing with the binge eating, you know, all of that was like, my slate was wiped clean and it's because I had the, either desperation or the courage to try carnivore. <laughs> you're, you're on mute. You're on mute. I can't hear you. Okay. Thanks for letting me know. There we go. Off to a flying start. <laughs> um, I was just saying, yeah, it's no shit though, really, right? When you start eating the most nutrient dense foods known to man, not just the most nutrient dense, but also bioavailable nutrients in the likes of, you know, ruminant animals like beef, for example, organ meats, you know, uh, dairy, if you can tolerate that. And then it's no wonder you start feeling better, but also it's a case of you've eliminated things which were causing you an issue. And in your case, obviously, this is very interesting how you were morbidly obese at one point and binge eating, because I used to struggle with this myself in my, my bodybuilding days. And when you're eating those ultra processed foods, and you're not in a good place mentally, you know, because really your relationship with food and your eating habits say more about your relationship with yourself than anything else. So in terms of being like morbidly obese, just curious to tap a little bit deeper into the psychology there, if you don't mind sharing how you ended up, you know, what was the journey to being morbidly obese? Because we know that is essentially a project, right? Getting to the point where you're more morbidly obese. Yes. And, and what that was like for you living like that. 
Yeah. So I was overweight from the time I was a young child. Um, I know that in first grade, I was 130 pounds. And for reference, my daughter, she's in third grade and she's like 65 pounds, 65, 70 pounds. So I was very, very overweight for a first grader. Um, and because of that, um, you know, doctors are always concerned about my weight for obvious reasons. And my parents were divorced. When I would go to my dad's house, it was an extreme diet um, and lots of exercise. So, and, you know, I was and it, and it was always like, OK, it felt like a punishment, like I'm fat. So I have to do this. When I go to daddy's house. And so I had a very, very terrible relationship with my body, uh, with food um, and all of that. And so in high school, I took matters in my own hands and went pretty much on a starvation diet. I didn't eat anything for days at a time. If I did eat anything, it was like diet soda or like some gummy worms or something like that. And I lost lots of weight, um, but I still had a terrible relationship with food, terrible relationship with my body. I was an emotional eater whenever, whenever I was sad. I would turn to food um, whenever I was happy. I would turn to food, mad, whatever. Um, and I was only able to keep that up for a very short period of time. So through the week at school, I would starve myself. And then on the weekend, I would go to my boyfriend's house and uh, we would binge on food. I would binge. He was He's a sensible person. So he'd have like a slice or two of pizza. And he's like, wow, you can really put it away, you know, <laughs> eating the whole thing. Um, so after high school... Um, I wasn't living with my dad anymore. I was just living with my boyfriend. So it was that all the time. And any hurt I had as a child, any hurt I had my whole life, all of that, um, you know, I was, I was able to self-medicate with food and weed, marijuana. Um, and I, I gained so much weight, um, so I, I think I was probably like 120 pounds when I was starving myself from there, I gained like 50 pounds. Uh, so I was like 170 pounds. And then I got pregnant with my daughter and I gained 90 pounds during that pregnancy as I was young. And, you know, it was, it was a stressful time. I didn't know what my life was going to be like. And I pretty much just sat on a couch and ate for nine months and put on 90 pounds and really just through my already bad health into a, like a whirlwind of bad health that would last for years. Mm. Thanks for sharing. But to get into the shape you're in now, not just physically, right? The main thing is mentally and emotionally, because that dictates how you look anyway, right? But for yeah. you to be where you're at now, just curious to know the struggles, because, you know, it sounds quite straightforward, right? When we talk about on a podcast, but to actually do what you've done transform your whole lifestyle and make changes that are permanent. By the way, I think that's important for people to understand. It's not about, you know, I eat carnivore, simple as that. It's about mm -hmm. doing what is sustainable. And what obviously the approach Alyssa has taken is obviously sustainable because she's managed to sustain it and that she's made changes that she can stick to effectively with her lifestyle. But just curious to know the, the, the struggles making that transition and managing to detach from those processed foods and, and the way you were living because you've lived your whole life a certain way. As you say, you know, you sat on the couch for nine months, gained 90 pounds, you were morbidly obese. So to overcome that, like that shit is not easy <laughs> to say the least. No, you know what? It's so crazy when someone, when I'll talk to someone about this, cause I'm like, Whoa, that was me. Like I did that. And I'm like, yeah, I did. How did I even do that? And I start to think about it. And, um, so yeah, it was, it was crazy. I know that <clears throat> when I found myself morbidly obese, I had these chest pains. I had the super, super high blood pressure. I was 19 years old. And this was right after the birth of my first child, my daughter. So I'm holding this beautiful baby in, in my hands. And, um, for the first time I was thinking, oh crap, I better get healthy because if not, you know, she's probably not going to have a mom, you know, if this is what it's looking like for me at 19, I'm probably not going to make it 30. And so I was able to get myself to exercise regularly. I started off just walking 
And then I went on what I call a common sense diet. Like, uh, I know soda is unhealthy. I know like Twinkies are unhealthy. I know fast food is unhealthy. So I'm going to leave that stuff alone. And those were really decisions made out of fear though. And I, so I still didn't have a great relationship with food and I could, I could keep up, keep this up for a while. And then I would binge on the things that I liked, the things that comforted me. But even doing that, I was able to lose weight. Um, I didn't gain health. I didn't gain physical or mental health, but I did lose weight, um, to a point that I was about the size I am now in about two years from there. I went on a vegan diet that destroyed my health even further. I mean, that, that like took me steps back I, in hindsight, I would have never, ever did that. But I thought that that was the next step. I thought that was the next healthiest thing that I could do. Um, and still I had a terrible relationship with food, terrible relationship with my body and all the decisions that I made, um, ever to exercise or to watch what I was eating was out of fear and out of hate for my body. Uh, and, it, and it wasn't until years later until finding carnivore that, that really changed, um, really until so started to go low carb that my relationship with my body started to change. Um, and then carnivore is something I can say that this is magical or miraculous. Something changed with my relationship with food, um, that I, and, and I had like this kind of dark night of the soul moment when I went carnivore because some stuff came up, some mental things came up, some hurt and I would have turned to food in the past and it was like, whoa, I don't have that to turn to. I'm not going to turn to that. And I had to work it out and, you know, figure out how to, how do you, how do I cope without that being, all right, well, let me just stuff something in my face. Um, I wasn't going to have sugar um, or, you know, any, any junk food. And it was like, I was finally able to release my attachment to, um, to those things, like the, the mental attachment because I was only eating meat. Um, and I, and that was something that was unexpected. I going into carnivore, I kind of figured, I, I remember my husband being concerned because he was thinking, Oh, this is a really restrictive diet. You know, she's going to do this for a while and then just fall off the wagon and hate herself or whatever. But it really changed things for me. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. But yeah, I um, I was sharing on your podcast the other day that I've been eating kind of like strict carnivore now for three weeks. And normally I eat primarily just like meat and fruit mainly. Uh, so it's animal based. But I am going to be introducing because it's very hard for me to get enough calories in. So, and what I've noticed with jujitsu as well is um, I just, I perform great, but I, in the evenings, I've noticed this week that I just, I'm, I'm craving, not craving, that's the wrong word. My body intuitively is telling me like, you need some carbohydrates. I just know my body really yeah. well. So I'm going to introduce some of those se seasonal fruits and stuff like that. Perhaps some like coconut yogurt here and there as well and see how I feel now. But I've noticed my sleep has drastically improved. Uh, I've naturally dropped weight. Obviously, I don't want to lose weight, but naturally, I'm pretty much shredded now, right? Just as a result of, uh, you know, detaching from carbohydrates and just eating less calories because it's uh, – my girlfriend established this as well. She's been she, – she tried it. For, the reason I tried it is because she was trying it for a month, uh, just a strict carnivore, but she eats like animal-based anyway and healthy, so it's not extreme. And that's something I think is important for the audience, going from one extreme to another. If you're someone that eats like a westernized diet and you're thinking, I'm going to go – I wouldn't recommend doing that. Like it's, you've got to have a strategy to what you're doing, but at the level Alicia, I, and, and, and my partner are in, we can do this and, and really fine tune things. So yeah, I've noticed a good benefits, but I'm going to start, you know, bringing in some, some carbohydrates again now, but I wanted to, um, to what you were saying there really stood out to me in terms of like my approach with clients. And I'm sure you can probably relate to this. People always think, right, I want to lose weight. And it's going to what you were saying there, the common sense diet, right? I love that, by the way, I'm going to, I always say eating like an asshole, right? You know, we know what that's like. You're eating like an asshole on the weekends. We know what that is. I don't have to go into detail, right? But when you're eating those foods, whether that be Twinkies or you're drinking a bunch of calories through soda or whatever, right? You're just constantly never satiated. And those foods are designed to make us eat 
the hell out of them, basically, those ultra-processed foods. So you're always going to be fighting a losing battle. And my approach with clients, you know, a lot of people come to me, they want to lose weight. They want to improve their body works. They want to get healthier and everything else. And it's always a case of, right, let's have a look at the food you're missing out on. For example, protein, a simple one. Let's increase your protein intake. Let's get more animal-based foods in there, good quality, you know, meat, for example, or whatever else. And naturally, they feel like they're eating more. It's like, it looks like they're eating a lot, but they're actually not. They're, they're eating, in terms of calories, they're eating less calories than they were, but they're actually getting an abundance of nutrients in. They're getting way more protein in. And when you increase protein, you know, it's very hard to overeat, especially when you're getting it through meat. It's impossible. My girlfriend and I established the fact that it is literally impossible to overeat on the carnival diet. It was impossible for us not to get leaner. Like, I mean, like literally it was impossible not to get leaner. But, you know, when you start adding in foods and like it could be certain types of fats as well, it could even be, I don't want to, again, I don't want to demonize vegetables. If, you, if you're thriving eating vegetables, great. I don't want people to listen to this and think, oh shit, you know, I'm doing it all wrong. If you're thriving, you're eating vegetables, you're eating whole foods, fantastic. Um, but when you're eating more meat, you're eating more good quality foods. Naturally, what I find is they start naturally replacing those processed foods with these foods and they start wanting to have have more of a desire to eat these foods like especially beef i don't know how you can get bored of eating beef or steak and uh, they naturally it feels like they're eating more they, they, they're like wow this is actually feels like i'm eating a lot but they start losing body fat and they start looking better uh and everything starts to improve just curious to know if you've in terms of your methods if you've noticed that when you actually start introducing these good quality foods that naturally, when people are consistent, things start to change in terms of their relationship with food? Yeah, you know, I've had one client, um, when she first came to me, she was like, I got to be honest with you, I drink a bottle of wine every night. And I was like, wow, you know, I'm impressed you've been able to get her away with that for that this long, because, you know, she's almost 50. And and she's in pretty good shape. She's a she's a um, biker she she a cyclist and so she rides her bike all these miles every week so I was like wow I'm really impressed you're able to get away with that and um but that was something that she had wanted to change but she just felt like she couldn't let it go that was just her thing her thing that she went to and first thing when I start discussing what my client's gonna be putting in their body the first thing is okay we've got to get you eating more protein okay <laughs> And, um, and she has and like when she, when I first started working with her, it was like one egg for breakfast. And I was like, no, that's, that's not enough. <laughs> it's like an egg and some fruit. I was Six like, grams of protein. Got... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, we need to bump that up some definitely at least three eggs and maybe some bacon on the side. Um, but you know, it's been about a year now she's been working with me and she has, decreased her bottle of wine every night down to a glass or two per week on her own. And, you know, she says that she doesn't feel the wired feelings that she used to feel before, like the anxiousness, the, or like, like she needed something to cap her dinner, you know, and I think it's because she's, she's having that more of that protein before and uh, that she wasn't getting before. Absolutely. I love that. And that's such a good point you made there, like starting the day. And a lot of people, like, for example, before you educated her, people generally, they, most people have the wrong idea of what high protein is, is what I'm trying to say. It's like, oh yeah, I had plenty of protein today. I had a bit of cheese. I had two eggs and a couple of slices of ham. And then you like calculate it. And it's like, you grossly under eating protein. Like most of the time, that's the case for the average person until you actually start doing it. And then, as you say, that's a prime example, bacon and eggs. She might feel like she's eating a lot. It's enjoyable to eat. And then naturally yeah. then everything starts to fall in or fall into place. Right. So yeah. What would you say the most common, just curious to know what you would say the most common problems are that you face in your clients that you feel like, okay, this is a, a reoccurring problem and uh, how you help them overcome it. Anything that comes to mind, I know it's kind of like a weird question, but you know, I feel like, hmm, I, w I would have to say expecting the microwave results, okay? <laughs> Thinking that they're going to come like in that. and touch like it, touch a weight a few times and then like, oh, I grew a butt, you know, <laughs> and, and not, and not realizing that this is something that you're going to, you're going to need to put the time in, um, that it's not going to be 
the Instagram transformation, you know, the cute song and then before, after, you know, it, it takes time. Um, and I, I feel like a lot of that and, and I don't want, I don't want to, I don't want this to come out wrong, but a lot of being the trainer I am is distracting the client while we wait for their results. Okay. Cause you know, if, if I can keep them consistent long enough, they'll get those results. Um, and really working on mindset that, you know, like I was saying, when I was making those changes in the beginning, it was all out of fear and hate for my body and a big shift for me that really changed everything was when it wasn't, when my efforts weren't coming from fear and hate for my body, it was coming from love of life and like enjoying living and, um, enjoying how it feels to feel healthy and wanting to continue to feel healthy and keep feeling more healthy. And I feel like when they can get to that point, you know, they're, they're staying consistent because they're enjoying how it's feeling and not because they're trying to run away from something or get to a certain uh, look they're trying to achieve. You've, you've dropped some absolute gems here. So you've got like microwave results. Haven't heard that one before. You've got the common sense, just for the listeners, there's some gems here, right? The common sense diet. And then what you said then was exactly what I do, but I've never heard it communicated that way, distracting the client from the result, right? Because people get so caught up with the physical results that they lose track of the important things, right? And that's so important to just, you have to first and foremost, trust the process, but you have to put the time and the effort in really, right? And, you know, focusing on those, on on health, focusing on uh, getting the client to focus on how they feel, you know what I mean? Like tracking certain things. And then the physical results come as a, as the byproduct then, right? But people always want fast results. And there's nothing wrong with setting a client up for small wins. But one of the biggest problems we face, because most of my clients are type A, you can probably relate to this. And I used to struggle with it. I still do at times. It's like perfectionism. So the if they're not perfect or in, in their, they've achieved a lot of success in certain areas of their life, and that's great because that's a great trait. They can transfer that into getting into shape. But then it's like, if they're not perfect with certain things, the self-sabotage can kick in then and they can kind of almost want to hit the off button. So I always, like my motto is always, you know, consistency over, over perfection, you know? So yeah, some some really interesting interesting points you shared there. And you also said then about self-hate, about being driven by self-hate instead of self-love. What was that transition like for you in terms of getting to the point where you hated your body, uh, you used to punish your body almost, right? I'm sure you used to have that mentality maybe when you trained to actually treating your body like someone you care about. Yeah, so I've, it's it's been a long journey. Definitely the, the self-hate and the feeling like I need to punish my body, that definitely came from childhood. Um, and then not to bash my dad or anything you know I I love him and all my hardships made me who I am today but that was definitely how how it was brought across at, when I was a kid like you're fat you know like there I had six brothers and sisters and they would all have dessert and no Alyssa's not going to have any because she needs to lose weight you know so it was it was that that's how it was set up for me um and that was really hardwired into me like if i ate something off plan it was like okay well i guess i'm just going to get up tomorrow morning and run 3 miles pushing a stroller you know cuz i need to i need to make this right um and that all really started to and, and it also also with the health problems and it was like you know why are like like I was talking to my body, why are you doing this to me? Why are you making my life like this? Um, that all started to shift. Um, really 2020 was a turning point for me to really start to realize that I can work with my body, that I'm not separate from my body. Like this is my vessel and, you know, I'm going to be nice to my body and just like, and I'm not going to talk to myself in a way that I wouldn't want my daughter talking to herself or in a way that I wouldn't talk to my daughter. Um, and 
I've, cause I've read a lot of self-help books and that's something that kept coming up. Like, how would you talk to a friend? You wouldn't talk to a friend as mean as you're talking to yourself or as mean as you're treating yourself. And, you know, really thinking if I was, um, my daughter, what would, what would I do? How would I treat her if she was having the issues I was having? And the answer is with love, kindness, compassion, you know, it's okay. You fell a little short today. You know, you'll, you'll do better tomorrow. You know, you know what you need to work on. Um, and you know, and, and like, even with the health issues, like being able to, to have love for myself, love and compassion that I'm still alive, you know, and, and thriving at this point, despite, you know, th these things that don't happen to majority of people in their twenties and to really uh, be grateful that my body's like, Oh, she's pumping us full of junk, but we're going to keep on going, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah. And, and I want to, I want to continue to love my body. And the more, I feel like the more love I pour into myself and my body, the better it everything gets, the better my health gets, um, the better my relationships get with my kids and my husband and everybody else um, that I'm around. Um, better, the better life is, the better I feel like I look. And um, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks for sharing. And if you can manage to kind of wrap, I know we're running, running out of time a bit now after uh, us doing that Instagram live. Um, I was going to say, if you can wrap this up in a couple of minutes, like what, for example, like what you've eaten today and what you'll eat tonight, just give us an example of today, what you, what you've eaten and what you're going to eat tonight. Um, and then just what your, tr like your training regime looks like, what does it look like for Alyssa, a, a day in the life of Alyssa? Okay. So this morning I had some leftover chili and it was just ground beef with made with ground beef, um, bone broth, uh, that I simmered for like two days. And I was like, I've got to have this bone broth, bone broth for the chili. Cause my kids won't have it any other way. Uh, they won't eat bone broth any other way. So I had bone, that bone broth chili for breakfast. Um, and then for lunch, I had a can of sardines, three boiled eggs, uh, some olives. And then for dinner, we had like a chicken Alfredo with spaghetti squash. Um, and that's it. I... <laughs> that's a nice little balance had... there, though. That's, that's, yeah, that's, that sounds really, yeah. really delicious. That breakfast, what was it? Chili bone broth. That sounds epic. Yeah. I need to get oh, on it that. Was, it was really good. It was so good. Yeah. My husband was like, what are you having leftover chili for breakfast? And I was like, yeah. This, this is where it's at. <laughs> yeah. That, going back to what we were saying for breakfast, this is what people need to do more of is they need to have like, for example, ground beef that tastes good mixed with whatever yeah. spices, chili, whatever, and having that for breakfast with your eggs. That's a great way to get your protein levels up. And it's just going to blunt your appetite for most of the day. Um, what does your training regime look like and your self-care regime? Yeah. So I, if anybody's curious and they want to see this, cause it might sound a little bit complicated me just saying it but I've made a YouTube video of my week of workouts and also some of my lifestyle things I do but pretty much my workout split takes nine days to complete and it's a lower body upper body rest lower body upper body rest lower body um abs kind of and like some cardio and then I'll do another rest um and so that takes nine days to complete and I'll start it all over again. And so on my, on these days that are rest days, I will um, do some cold plunging in that morning. And then I take the rest of the day to really just relax and reset my nervous system, clean my house, you know, <laughs> the stuff I, I, I was too busy to do on other days. Um, and then on leg days, I will, Afterwards, do uh, a little bit of sauna. I found a really cool sauna blanket on Amazon and it kind of looks like a sleeping bag. And I was a little like, I don't know how well this is going to work out, but it's really cool. And it, and it makes me relax for a little while, you know, as I get in the sleeping bag and I'm just like reading a book or whatever. Um, and other than that, I do some red light uh, most days of the week red light therapy. Um, and I really try to 
really try to relax and like do things like grounding, hiking with my kids, really try to enjoy life, laugh a lot, um, like really like, really like be here, show up, live this life and not be so busy that I'm missing the whole thing. Beautiful, beautiful. Great way to uh, to end this. Where can the audience find you, my friends? Yeah, so I am on YouTube um, under Alyssa Grubner. I'm also on Instagram at meet, M-E-A-T, Mrs. Grubs. Um, and I also have a fitness-based Instagram account, and that's at unity underscore fit. And then you can find Carnivore Stories on YouTube Apple Podcast and Spotify. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Awesome. I appreciate your time. Really enjoyed that conversation, Alyssa. Yes, me too. It was a good one. Okay. Speak soon. <laughs>